Okay, hello to the first presentation for today, at least for those that selected this one. So my name is Kostis. Uh, I've been working for CodePress as a developer advocate. I'm also part of the Argo team. And I'm also the co-author of the, I wouldn't say the first ever GitHub certification. Now I need to update the slide. It's an Argo CD certification. So you can do the GitHub certification that you've seen in the keynote. And then after you finish, you can do this one. Um, so I'm working for CodePress. CodePress is an enterprise company that has a commercial product on top of Argo CD and Argo rollouts and Argo events and Argo workflows. We have a booth outside if you want to know more about CodePress. Uh, but this presentation will not be about CodePress. We're going to talk about Argo rollouts and some problems with microservices. So who is using Argo rollouts in production? Great. Who knows what is the Kubernetes downward API? Who is using the Kubernetes Downward API in production? Perfect. OK, you are in the correct place. Uh, so we are going to talk about the Kubernetes Downward API and how you can use it with some Argo rollouts features um, in order to, to, to use it for microservices. And there will be a demo as well. So just a two minute introduction for those who have never seen it before. Argo Rollouts is one of the four projects of the Argo family. It's a self-contained project. It can work on its own without Argo CD. And essentially it's a Kubernetes controller that allows you to do progressive delivery. And because progressive delivery means different things to different people, for this presentation I'm talking about um, blue-green deployment. You have an application, it's running. You create a brand new version. You test the version without, any, uh, without affecting the production instance, and then at some point you promote and you make a traffic switch to the new version. So that's blue-green, and the Canary uh, case is a bit more smart. You gradually shift um, traffic to the new version, so you send 10%, then 20%, and then when you say, okay, I'm confident, you promote everything. So that's progressive delivery. And people say, OK, Argo Rollouts is uh, the, great, the best project ever. Let's adopt it. And they quickly find out that Argo Rollouts is centered on a single application or a single service. So it's a smart controller. It offers several um, integrations with popular traffic providers. It has a metric integration. You can do fancy checks and everything that you want, but only for one service and one service only. That's the main assumption behind Argo Rollouts. So people say, OK, let's adopt Argo rollouts. And of course, the real world is completely different. Usually, you have applications like this. So it's not a single service. There is a front end that communicates with a back end. And then they communicate with a database or a queue. And maybe you even have some services that don't have any HTTP endpoint at all. They are just workers. So they fetch something from a queue. They process it. And then they save it back or to another database. So this is a typical example. Or an even more typical example, especially for companies that have adopted microservices, you have here two kinds of users, the public users and then your own users that they have an internet application which is connected to the main application. There is a North microservice, a payment microservices, uh, two databases. And this is, let's say, a more classic example of what happens in real life. And people say, OK, let's use Argo rollouts here. So what do you do? Ideally, if your developers have adopted microservices in the correct way, these services should be independent. They should be deployed independently. So you should come and say, OK, I want to do a canary in payments. Let's put payments to 1.7. I test my canary. I finish the canary. OK, I'm finished with payments. Then I will do blue-green with products, and so on and so on. This is what you would do ideally. But uh, remember, this is the real world, so this will never work. Because essentially developers come to you and they say, hey, we have some limitations in the way we have adopted microservices. One example is they come to you and they say, hey, the front end and the back end, the back end always need to be the same version. They need to be deployed the same way. So if you want to do a canary in the front end, you also need to do a canary in the back end and then connect both of them together. This is what the developers say to you. And essentially, they force you to do something more complex. You need to do a canary on both services at the same time. And you also need to instruct the front end to connect to the canary back end. And this is what the canary should look while the de deployment is happening. And 
end users should stay unaffected by all this. They should still see the original version of both services. So this makes things a bit more complex for you. How do I know that this is a problem? Uh, one of the things I do as part of my role is to go into the Argo rollout Slack channel in the CNCF instance where you should also be a part of, and I see people asking the same question all the time. I have a front end, I have a back end, and I want to deploy both of them at the same time. So this is a problem that people have already. And I sat down and created an example, even wrote a blog post where I cover like the possible um, cases and some workarounds on how to solve this problem. And that was only one problem because developers come to you and they say more things about your architecture. So the other problem is here that you have a worker and remember this is not an HTTP service. It doesn't know anything about HTTP traffic. It's connecting to the queue with an unknown protocol to Argo rollouts. And you have the problem there that if you launch a second instance, unless you do something smart, the second instance will start picking tasks from the queue. And usually developers say to you, hey, I don't want two applications with a different version picking tasks from the same queue. This will not work, so please do something else. So what you do there, uh, the simplest case is you say, okay, I will launch the service and I will create a preview database or a preview queue and I will connect my preview version there so production stays unaffected. There is only one um, version of the application looking at production and then you have your own version with a custom database and this is also a good way um, to do tests because you can control the data that you put in the preview database. And how do I know that this is a problem? Again, people go into the Slack instance and they ask the same question, how do I use Argo rollouts with workers? So I sat down again and I wrote a blog post with a solution for this particular problem on how to use Argo rollouts with workers and queues. And then I thought instead of you know just answering each edge case one by one and understanding what people want, let's try to give a generic solution that will work in all cases uh, where people have adopted microservices. And this is what this presentation is about. So the main problem is that right now people try to adopt Argo rollouts and essentially they look at an application as a black box. You have the application, it's running, and then you try to do some things in the manifest and to your controllers, but the application doesn't know anything about it and you don't know anything about the application. So this is one approach that you are going to, to find where you have all these problems and there is another approach where essentially you cooperate with the application. You tell to the application what is happening around it and you try to gain some confidence not from your own actions but also from the application itself. So the approach we're going to talk about today is where we explain to the application what is happening and applications are aware of the state of the Canary or the blue-green deployment. So how do we do this? Here I'm going to give you some ideas for your next uh, AI startup. Essentially, I would like a nice way to talk to my frontend and say, hey, my beautiful frontend, everything is fine right now, things are fine, but I'm going to start a Canary process and while you're running in Canary mode, you should do something different. So in our example, if you're running in Canary and you're the frontend, please talk with the Canary version of the backend. Then I will do my checks, I will check everything, and then I will go back to my front end and say, hey, my beautiful front end, the deployment has finished, please revert back to your original state. So that solves the first problem. And then for the second problem, hey, my beautiful worker, there is a blue-green deployment happening right now, please don't touch the production database, go to a preview database that I have created just for you. I've done my test, I said, okay, I'm now ready with the promotion, I promote, and then I will say to my uh, worker, okay, now you can go to the production database. So we don't have this AI tool yet. Uh, so we need essentially to, to emulate it with a manifest. So the tools that we're going to see today is the Kubernetes downward API, uh, Argo ephemeral uh, labels, auto reloading on configuration, and also how to work with developers in order to Con convert this, let's say, English language to something that Kubernetes understands. So the Kubernetes Downward API, uh, this is an API that is part of Kubernetes. I think it's there for a long time. It's completely unrelated to Argo rollouts. And essentially it allows you to put some labels on a deployment 
and then convert these labels to files or environment variables uh, in an application. So here I have an example. There are some labels on the deployment, and I chose to mount all these labels to etc slash pod info labels. And then the application can read the information from the labels, and it doesn't need to know anything about labels or even doesn't need to know anything about Kubernetes. As far as the application is concerned, it just reads files and nothing else. The Kubernetes API also has an option to use um, environment variables, but for reasons that will become apparent in the next slides, is not the recommended uh, way to do it. So we are going to use these labels to make our application smarter, and essentially we are going to use labels to explain to the application what is happening and explain its role while the deployment is, um, is happening. So we are going to say to the application, hey, now you are in this mode, and hey, now you are in that mode, and all the application is going to do is just read files. Okay, so this explains how we use labels to tell our application what it's doing, who will create these labels for us, and of course you could do it manually, but there is no need for that. Argo rollouts already has a feature for a long time, I think it's from version 1.4, where you can go and edit your deployment, and it works for both blue-green and um, canary deployments, and put some labels there and say to Argo rollouts, while a deployment is happening, put these labels into the respective um, service. And you can see I have started the example there where the label I have, chosen is, I have chosen is role, and I say stable or canary or active or preview. So now we have all the components that we need. Here is the example with the queue worker. So we start in the beginning and the worker just connects to the production database and nothing is happening. Then I'm starting a blue-green deployment and automatically Argo rollouts sends the corresponding labels to the corresponding version. So the production version knows that right now is stable, so it's still using the production database. But the preview version has a special role label, and in this case I also have added some um, uh, labels for a different configuration for the queue, and I'm sending the, the preview version to a different queue. So these two versions are completely isolated. Then, when I want to promote, the stable version is completely destroyed, and again I change the labels automatically with Argo rollouts uh, to the preview version, and I'm saying, hey, from now on you are promoted, so please go back to the production queue. And then the process starts again from the same point. Now, the most critical point there was the, the, third, the third box, because I have the preview, data, the, the preview uh, version, and I need to make a switch, not a traffic switch, but let's say a configuration switch, where I say don't use the preview database anymore, use the production one. And in order for this to work, remember I talked about the cooperation with the application, we need the application to auto-reload its configuration. So this is where you should talk to the developers, and first of all, you should have configuration. I know this uh, seems basic, but there are lots of applications out there where things are hard-coded, so you shouldn't have any hard-coded configuration. So in our example, the DB URL or the Q URL or the backend, they should be part of the configuration. And then the critical point is that the application should understand when the configuration is changing and auto-reload and uh, understand that there is a, was a change in the configuration. And you need to talk with the developers about this. It's not something that you can do with Kubernetes manifests. And I've already talked with the developers about this. I know what they are going to say. And usually they come back and say, we don't know how to do that. Or our programming language doesn't support this. So I've done all the research for you. And I guarantee that for every popular language out there that they are using, there is a way where you can reload the configuration automatically from a file these are some of the popular uh, libraries. The demo that we are going to see today is about uh, Golang. And usually it's just one line change, like two lines of code. It's not something complex that they cannot do uh, easily in, I don't know, one hour or two hours, assuming that the configuration already exists. And I think this is the running um, theme, like if you need to keep one thing from this presentation, is that this is one of the cases where you need to talk to the developers, explain what you're going to do, and get help from them. Because I see a lot of time administrators that they don't talk to developers at all. They just say, I'm going to use Argo rollouts, and they try to do everything with manifests. And this is why we have all the issues that you have seen so far. So talk to the developers. Um, 
I think also step zero is that you are going to explain what you're going to do because there are some applications, um, usually old applications, that they never even support having multiple versions of the same application running at the same time. Sometimes there are some special logs or some shared resources or stuff like that. So talk to them, explain what you're going to do and ask them uh, for their, their help about this. So I have a demo here for the, um, the worker case. Uh, we're going to see the example I talked about before. You have a worker, it connects to a database. I'm going to use Rabbit and Q in, I, in my case. And then without killing any pods or without restarting any application, we'll just instruct the application to use a different queue while the, the blue green deployment is happening. And then after we promote, we will say, okay, now we are ready. Please switch back to the production queue. So here I have an application deployed in Kubernetes. Uh, it's using Rabbit and Queue as a backend. And just for demo purposes, this application is printing its configuration. So you are looking at version 1.0 right now, and you can clearly see it says with role active. So this application is a smart application. It, it knows it's running in production right now. And I'm also printing the variables about the, um, the Rabbit and Queue uh, instance that it's using. So it's using my production queue. So nothing is happening right now. <coughs> Um, this is also my RabbitMQ instance, and the, you see there is only one queue there, and nothing is happening there as well. And this is also my rollout. Uh, if you haven't seen this, this is uh, the rollout CLI, and essentially it says there is only one version, and nothing is happening. Okay, so we are in the first box. There is one application, one instance. It's connecting the production queue. So I'm going to make a new... Uh, version, <laughs> and I think one of the important things to show is that as far as the administrator is concerned, the only thing I'm going to change in the manifest is the version. That's it, okay? I'm not going to change any other configuration. I will show you later where is the configuration, but this means that things are very simple for me as well. So I'm saying I'm going to deploy version 2.0. So I apply it, and now let's see what happens. So first of all, if we go to the rollout, you will see that now I have two versions, but just for the demo, the stable one uh, is still the previous one, the old version. And then I'm going to restart my port forwards. And if we go back to the UI, this is production, and nothing has happened. I reload, and it's still version 1.0, and it knows it's in production. Okay, that's fine. And then here I have the preview. And you can see here that this is version 2.0, and it knows it's running in preview mode. Okay, so production, preview, production, preview. I made it so that you can see the changes. So there is one change in the configuration where this one knows that it's running in preview, and also the configuration for RabbitMQ is different. So in this example, just to make things simple, it's still the same RabbitMQ instance, but I'm connecting to a different queue. It could be a completely different RabbitMQ instance as well. This is my preview queue. And then here I have my uh, tester, which in a real example would be another service that is using the queue and saving stuff there. So I'm saying I go, I'm going to send three messages to production, and I send three messages, four. And now if I go into production, you can see all the messages I sent. So they were picked by the production version of the application. And the preview version knows nothing at all, which is how it should be. Then I can go to my tester and say, OK, maybe I have my developers run a unit test or integration test or QA test. So I'm going to send some messages to the preview uh, queue. And again, production knows nothing about them while preview has seen the messages, okay? So I have achieved what I wanted. I have two versions running at the same time, and each one is using a different queue, and there is no problem with production. If I also go now to my um, RabbitMQ instance, you can see two queues there. As I said, again, this is just an example. You could have different RabbitMQ instances. So if we look at the demo, 
I'm now in the second box, okay? So I have two versions and everything is fine. And now we reach the moment of truth, okay? I'm going to promote my rollout. So the standard version, the stable version will completely disappear. And also I'm going to instruct my preview version and say, hey, from now on you're running in production. So please make a switch and go to the um, production queue. So I'm going to promote uh, the deployment and just for this demo I'm doing it manually but in a real application you would have metrics that do the promotion uh, for you. So I promote. Again, I'm going to start my uh, port forwards. So now if we look at the rollout, you can see that uh, the new version has been promoted and actually in 17 seconds the previous version will be destroyed as well. So what is happening right now, if I go back to my application, we are in production and if I refresh, we have two. Version two now has been updated. And how do I know that it's the same application? You can still see it has the preview messages that it has processed there, but now if I'm going to send some messages to production, they are picked by version two. So you can clearly, clearly in the logs the cutoff point where while this application was running in blue green, it was processing messages from the preview queue. And then at some point I said, okay, now you're promoted. You should know that you're in production. So please switch back and you can see it's taking messages from the production queue. So how many pods did they restart? Zero. How many applications did I kill and restart in order to read the configuration? Zero. All I did as an administrator was to just change the version in the manifest so things are simple for me as well. Um, so that's the demo. And now we can look at uh, behind the scenes. So this is my uh, rollout. It's a standard rollout as you could write it um, in a blue green case. And essentially the first important part is uh, this part which is remember the feature of Argo rollouts where I'm using ephemeral labels and I'm saying during the deployment, please take these labels and put them in the respective deployment. And for this example, it's just the RabbitMQ settings, but you can have as many settings as you want. If it was a front end, you could have the URL of the back end that it was using. So these are the labels. And then at the end, I'm using the downward API, which is this part, where I'm saying I'm going to use it and the actual uh, mounting is this part. So here I'm saying, take those labels that Argo rollouts uh, gives you and mount them at etc slash pod info labels. So these are only the changes I had to do in my application as an administrator, that's the whole thing. And once I, I set the labels, they are there forever. As you saw, I just changed the version of the application. I don't need to change the settings anymore. So these are the things I did. And then remember also the cooperation with um, developers. So this was just an example of uh, Go. And the first part is that everything I talked about is actually a configuration. It's not hard, hard coded anywhere. These are settings in the application. And there is one magic line, which is this one, which in the case of Go, it's offered by the Viper library and essentially says, hey, monitor your configuration. And if the file change, auto reload everything. So these are the changes that developers have to do. And you can see again, it's a single uh, line of code. So things are simple for them as well, not just for me. So that was the demo. You can find all the code at um, this URL. And you know, I used RabbitMQ, but you could do the same thing with uh, Kafka, uh, other microservices, frontend, uh, backend, MySQL, uh, whatever you want to do. And the example was in uh, go. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> so what have we seen today? It is possible to use Argo rollouts with microservices. You need to do some uh, work, but it's possible. The first big component is the Kubernetes downward API that allows you to mount some labels from Kubernetes to an application as files. Who uses labels? Argo rollouts, uh, again, manages all the labels for you automatically. And then you should also talk with developers and say, hey, you should, not, you should not have an application that reads the configuration only during startup. 
because then you have to kill pods, as you already know. Uh, you should tell them to make the changes so that the application knows when the files are updated and then auto-reloads the configuration as well. If you have all these components, it's possible to use Argo rollouts in most scenarios. And that's it. Thank you. And we have three minutes for questions, but I will be also outside at the booth. Yes. Do you have general strategies for how you use uh, the labeling and telemetry data in your representation? Do you understand how either the, the role for the table or play or blue green is kind of performing to meet those sort of metrics? That is the next presentation I'm preparing because I know every time I make a presentation, people ask about the next thing. But it shouldn't be that difficult if you already have the metrics in place and you have decided what it means for you that the promotion has succeeded, then you can use them as well. I think the biggest problem people have is they don't understand or they don't agree on what exactly a successful deployment is or they don't have the metrics in place for that. If you, if you are there, this would be super easy to do. One thing I didn't talk about is that in the case of microservices, people also ask uh, how they do canaries in the intermediate services, and then Ingress cannot help you. So this is also another uh, presentation. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. yes. Uh, because most most programming languages have no way of understanding if there is a case, a change in the environment variables. Like the way operating systems work, operating systems work and programming languages work. You start an application, it gets its environment variables, and then that's it. You cannot change environment variables and then also tell the application, hey, something changed. Where for files, this is super easy and there is already infrastructure for that. The Kubernetes Downwards API supports both, but specifically for Argo rollouts, I suggest to use the second way as well. Maybe there is a different use case for the Kubernetes environment, the Kubernetes Downward API for environment variables. Yes. Uh, I think I have covered this already. So there is actually a Docker Compose file here. And it's just putting a file there, like a normal file at etc slash pod info labels. So if you have this Docker Compose file, the application will run in exactly the same way, and you just need to, to, to change this. But this is another bigger discussion. I don't recommend trying to replicate Kubernetes constructs with Docker Compose. Yeah, it could work as well. Like, as far as the application is concerned, it just looks at a path and it doesn't know how this path was created or how it got the values. It just opens slash etc, whatever. If you agree on the path, then that's fine. 